Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Today I'm going to be trying to recreate a pin art toy in Notch. You may remember these from when you were young, where the displacement of the nails would leave behind an imprint of whatever was behind them. It's pretty neat, and as it turns out, it's a super easy effect to recreate in Notch. For the outer case and the pins, I whipped up a quick model in Maya already and exported it as an FBX. I'll quickly add it to my scene and hide the glass sub-object so I can see the pins while I'm working on them. I made this scene with the notch scale set correctly in Maya, but you may need to scale down other models depending on the size and units. Next, let's get our lighting sorted. First, I'm going to add a skylight and enable deferred rendering so the skylight can run. While I'm in the route, I'm also going to enable HDR and linear space lighting to get a more realistic lighting setup. Next, I'm going to add the environment image node, the HDR from the resource browser, and connect them together before adding it to the skylight. Now our skylight is using that environment to light our scene, but we should also enable omnidirectional to light our scene from all directions, and visible sky dome so that our environment image appears in the viewport. I'm also going to reduce the sample directions to 64 as I want this to run at real time and I can gain a big improvement in performance with a minimal loss to the lighting quality. Finally, I'm going to add a point cache node and a bounding box. The point cache is super useful because it can optimize the skylight in scenes with lots of geometry and give fine control over the quality in a skylight. I'll just adjust the point density a bit lower and enable apply lighting so that the skylight knows to use this node in its lighting calculation. Now let's get to the meat of this tutorial, the pins. So in Maya, I model a pin and copied it into a grid using their MASH system. This is fine, but to make it reactive in Notch, we'd been using a chunk effector with quite a large mesh. And all of those individual polygons come at a hefty performance cost. Because we are copying the same mesh multiple times without changing it, it's actually much more efficient to use a cloner system in Notch and effectors to move the pins. Now I've already exported an individual pin as a separate mesh, so all I need to do is add that resource to the node graph and child it to the cloner. Getting the cloner into an offset grid is nice and easy. First, I'll set the cloner into grid mode and make sure it's only cloning on the 2D plane. Currently, the clones are using a much larger area than the actual mesh, so let's reduce them to roughly fit the area of the mesh we had before and then up the clone count to fill up the area we just set. Each row of the cloner needs to be offset from the previous clone, so we'll need to carefully offset the grid stagger so that the clones sit in the middle of the clones just before. Finally, let's increase the Z count until all the clones are roughly equidistant to each other. You could do the math and use exact numbers, but to do this, I'll just do it by eye. Now let's work on the pin displacement. I think my best route for this is to use a depth image to offset the clones, as this will give the greatest control over the displacement with minimal performance cost. And the image effector is perfect for this. First, I'll add the node and connect it to the cloner's effector input. Next, I'll add a fractal noise and a mapping node, and then connect them to those relevant inputs too. The fractal noise is acting as a color source for our clones, while the mapping node is telling the image effector how to apply to the clones. Currently, it's facing along the clones, so let's rotate it to face downwards and scale it to fit the same plane as the clones. Again, you could use the math and do exact values, but I'm just going to do it by eye. Now we can see the clones are being colored instead of being offset, so let's turn down the color blending and set the Y position to 0.15. Now our pins are being offset based on the fractal noise, and we've solved the technical problem. We don't just have to use a fractal noise, we can use any video source we like, as long as the bright areas are the part we want to displace. For instance, I could use another scene as a depth source. Here I have a couple different shapes rotating around in another layer, and an output G-buffer node setting the output to be the camera depth. Using a layer pre-comp, I can replace the image source with this layer's output instead, and now the pins are being offset based off of geometry.
Now, it wouldn't be interactive if I didn't start interacting with it. So let's throw in a live video feed. I've got a webcam sitting next to me, so let's take the video feed from that and offset our clones with it. We'll need to add a video in source as the source for our camera feed in the node graph and enable it in the video in settings. This is also where we would need to enable connect if we wanted to use that to offset the clones too. Finally, I can connect that once again to the image effectors image input. And now the camera feed is offsetting the clones. This exact same setup could be used with a depth camera to offset the clones based on the depth of the video. It all depends on the look you're going for and the tools you have access to. Now I do need both hands for the keyboard and mouse, so I'll switch back to the layer precomp going forward. Now we've got the pins sorted, let's finish this off by making it look pretty. I'll start by enabling that glass mesh again and adding a basic material to it in the 3D scene node. I could try using ray trace glass, but I don't think I have the GPU for it to keep up with 30 frames a second, so I'm going to fake it with some alpha blending and an environment map. To do this, I just need to set the alpha mode to alpha blended and enable environment mapping and reflections. Next, I'll add an environment map and connect it to the root. I'll use the same image loader as the environment image for the end map and lower the alpha of the material so we can see through it. This is a pretty common technique in games and other real-time tools where ray tracing is too expensive for real-time and you can accept the loss in accuracy from the massive performance boost. Now while RT glass is too expensive, RT reflections is less intensive in comparison, so I'm going to add the node and enable ray tracing in the root, so the metal pins and the hard plastic have the right look. I want the pins to look like clean metal, so I'll add a metallic material and reduce the roughness and specular intensity a bit. I'm looking to have a hard dark plastic on the rest of the mesh. So I'm going to add a normal material with a dark grey colour, no roughness, and a slight reduction in specular intensity to reduce the brightness of some of those reflections and better match the glass. Finally, I'll add some temporal AA to improve the anti-aliasing and reduce some noise. Some film grading because it looks nice. and some colour correction to brighten the image and as the icing on the cake. From here you can spend hours tweaking the lighting, the materials and the post effects, but I'm just going to finish off here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.